basically we made this phone shop and made these sure it is brown and green and purple. You know, it's just like, well, um, in this particular case, instead of working with people's conventions, what you have to be worried about is um, how do you avoid people bringing that knowledge in the head to, to your shop to now basically confuse your message. Um, okay, so for, for uh, another thing that is always good is to make your chart whole, meaning that you don't want to have dangling pieces that all are connected to each other. So here, um, you know, when I make this chart, I make the two dots become one. And when you make two dots become one, you're now forced to have the same axis, you have one scale, and you have only one label. So that usually is better. I mean, like, that's not to say that you should turn every chart you know, you should never have handled the charts, but, um, but I think in this particular case, by putting them together, it reduces the chance of, 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 of things being contradictory. Um, and then my last piece of advice here is to make it move, but this is a very boss asterisk. Um, so making it move is oftentimes considered a good thing, especially in the modern age where we have web, graphics, and so on. Uh, but on the other hand, I've also found most interactive dynamic graphics to be more trouble than it's worth. Uh, so a good example of a nice use of uh, moving graphics, this is an effort uh, by Mike Berry and Brian Cobb. This is illustrating the Boston subway system. Uh, this would have been very useful if you're an operations person uh, running a operations center for the subway. So, um, I mean, it's not moving here, but on the, on the left side, it's a real time, it's supposed to be a real time rendering of where all the trains are along all the different routes uh, in the system. Uh, so you can, you know, sort of like punching effects and all kinds of things. Uh, and on the right side, these things are dynamically linked. You can see uh, a different view of the same data that would be useful uh, from more of a calendar uh, scheduling perspective. Um, there, there are a number of interesting uh, interactive graphics work out there, although um, I'm hard pressed to give you a lot of examples of ones that are considered very successful. There are lots of ones that are considered very unsuccessful. Uh, this is a typical one that um, makes me annoyed. So this is uh, Manchester in the UK. This chart is supposed to tell you uh, about which are the most expensive neighborhoods. Um, I doubt that anybody here is from Manchester. So, um, you know, I get nothing from here. So I basically have to hover over each individual, uh, you know, labels here to figure out what, what are the names, what is the prices, how far apart they are, and then um, the, the big trouble with these types of things where now people like to hide um, all the labels inside toolkits is that you are straining my memory. Um, I literally have to then remember the tooltips from the previous click and then try to work out in my head what's actually going on, and that's actually not a good use of interactivity. So uh, interactivity and dynamic uh, graphics are great, but you have to have a compelling reason for this. So you have to, your dynamic interactive graphics should be better than the static one, um, and I think, uh, that's a high bar, it's pretty hard to, to uh, hit. Um, so let me summarize for you, uh, here are some of the, um, well here are eight things that I think a uh, good data visualization uh, project is striving for. Uh, one is that it has to be uh, sufficient, um, meaning that if I remove the data, uh, labels of the chart, it should still work, um, or mostly work. Uh, it has to be easy for the reader to figure out what's going on, uh, it should be fixed, meaning uh, all the other things being equal, usually having plotting more of the data is better, is better than uh, plotting less, although there really is a peak data thickness, I would say, your chart becomes beyond that, um, your chart becomes uh, too heavy for its own good. Um, always try to make your chart screen, because if you have really have a strong message to tell, that message needs to be out there and screening. Um, speak directly. Uh, imagery is only good when uh, it helps the chart. Imagery is oftentimes really bad if it bears the message. Um, think about the knowledge that the readers bring in the head to your, to your understanding of charts. 
Um, oftentimes, uh, they will have, they will bring something that you might not be uh, aware of or have talks about, and then they create, that creates confusion. Uh, make your talk whole, um, meaning that you have consistency everywhere. And then the last thing is if it gives you a better benefit, you should be able to use um, That's really the end of the first part of this. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions right now. Uh, and then I think we're going to take a break before we get to the case study. So yeah, could you go back to the internet speed type? Oh, oh this one. Oh, oh the, uh, the, uh, this one, right? Yeah, so I think I have a theory of both. So okay. I mean, looking at those, it looks like those are the major market share. Does those look like pretty large companies that I'm familiar with compared to the ones that I might not have heard? Yeah, I mean, I, that would be good unless, uh, but then I think cost is pretty big and cable vision is yeah. also pretty big. So I'm not quite sure. You know, maybe there's a cut off that, uh, mm -hmm. that you know, you look at it and it might work. And then another comment I had on this too, also, if you were to break it down by region, so for example, Comcast might be really good in Los Angeles, or might be very poor in San Francisco. So yeah, I mean, like, I think I think you're right about that. Like to make this chart, I mean, to make it even better, uh, you have to break down by region. So I mean, that's actually true of a lot of other things. I've, um, I I had I mean one of my blog post radio shows this week, but um, there's a chart that the New York Times published that is actually really good in terms of it actually screens. So this is the David Bowie uh, chart where it shows you know, some Spotify or very little uh, you know, traffic. Um, David Bowie, the boy died and then you know, when he died, there's like a big spike. Um, and that is from processing a lot of web logs. My big, one of my big pet peeves about web logs is that people do not, um, do not have what I call local time. So, you know, basically everything is translated into like EST or PST or wherever your company is based. So that whole chart of EST, well, you know what? Um, it's a mixture of people from all kinds of regions and you're not really understanding anything when you have a spike at 2 a.m. Eastern time when it really calls by people in different parts of the world. Um, so yeah, so yeah, well, paying attention to that regional uh, differences and breakout is actually Any other questions? By, by thick, do you mean uh, having having multiple variables being displayed in the in the in the chart, or var you know various sources of variation? I'm not entirely certain. Which right. One. So um, thick there just basically means that you're using more data. You're putting more data. So that's a very end tough so, um, although uh, there's a limit to how far it goes. So he established, uh, I mean, one of the biggest uh, concepts that he put out there back in the 70s, which had a very uh, a, a strong influence on me, uh, is that he defined some that, something that he called the data ink ratio. So the data rate ratio is defined as of the ink that is used to print your page. Right nowadays, it's kind of obvious because it's a web graphic, but whatever. Um, it's of the ink that was used to print stuff on your page, what proportion of the ink is actually representing data as opposed to the not? Right? So the stuff that's not representing data would be like, you know, in the case of the uh, NFL player chart, you know, the entire figurine is going to be considered not data ink uh, by that company. Um, so that's sort of it. So if you can do that com computation, then what you're saying is that if you have a high proportion of the ink that is being used, so it's sort of like the efficiency metric of data graphics. So it was very appealing to me back then. Um, except that nowadays there's so much data that I think this becomes uh, a very complicated thing. So once you get over a certain point, if you dump too much data into your graphic, it becomes even harder to read because there's just too much going on. So I would caution again, just think of it as a binary Maximizing it. Um, yeah. So when you say, oh, oh, I, I guess we should break. <laughs> think no, 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 should we answer that question and then we'll just, no, no, just, just, just to, to ask you to clarify, help you clarify that answer. Yes. 
on your blog, you talk about having answering the right question and then getting enough data to answer the question. Right. Maybe your definition of pig is enough data is there to properly answer the question. Yeah, I'll address that later. I think in the afternoon, I'll talk a bit about this framework that I've talked about in the blog, which is uh, going to be led by the questions. So the, the one way to think about, you know, and I'm kind of riffing off of what you're saying, but one way to think about like, where the key is, is that if you have clearly defined your question, then there are only certain data that you have to answering that question, or those set of questions. And you should get rid of all the other stuff that is uh, relevant to your question. Um, and, and in one of the case studies that I will show you later, that's basically what I'm actually doing, is to process the data in such a way that I highlight the messages that I want and get rid of the other stuff. So when you define thick, you said more data. Do you mean more data points of one variable or more? It's it, very yeah. it, it could be both. Um, it, I would, I would caveat that by saying any more data points that will help uh, sharpen your message. Right? So there's no point in any more data points just for the sake of any more data points. Um, for instance, I'm not a huge fan of, although a lot of people love them, those really county level <coughs> maps that look really pretty because it has a good domain amount of data points in it. Um, I would only use those if somehow I define my question to but I want people to be able to look at county level uh, data. Um, if you're only really showing trends across the country, which is what those maps are typically showing because they show you the entire rest of the states, so you really only should try to show regional patterns, then there's really no need, in my mind, uh, to get to that level of detail. Um, it confuses me. Okay, thank you. Um, thank I'll be back in. Uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> so let me just, um, one, one of the last, those of you who are in that sitting in the 